What is going on, everyone? Happy Monday. Uh, today we're going to have a bit more of a casual episode because I want to talk about something that isn't necessarily super important to me, but seems really important to all of you, and that's why it's important to me. So for months now, for years now, it seems like, uh, but especially in the past couple months, um, Wizards is definitely trying to shake some things up. They're trying to figure out how can it become a eSport? How can it continue to feature its game, but also deliver a competitive environment? That, I think, has a bit of conflicting uh, goals, right? So most of us see coverage as pretty boring. There's a lot of issues with it. You can't see the cards very well. You can't really experience the personalities. Uh, the, the booth coverage is improving, but it's still overall not what I would consider must-see TV. And so Wizards of the Coast has decided, especially for the Pro Tour and its other event coverage, really to focus more specifically on standard. Now, I at first knew that this was going to be an issue. And there were a couple of reasons I felt the way I do. And I want to share them with you and then stick around because I think if you think like I think or similarly, there is a great way we can all get our message to Wizards of the Coast. And I'm going to keep this video somewhat. It's not going to be a 30 minute video like my normal videos lately. So the reason Magic the Gathering is still around 20 years later is far more complex than any one thing. What makes it a great game is far more complex than any one thing. But I think we can all agree that one of the most important reasons, one of the most important things about Magic the Gathering lasting, or one of the most important reasons, is it's played in a variety of ways. Overall, competitive magic is what gets most of the shine in terms of coverage, but I would venture to guess competitive magic players represent less than 2% of the entire magic player base. So why, if you're trying to grow your game, do you want to feature exclusively high competitive play and singular formats? See, this type of logic just doesn't make sense to me. When they came out and said they wanted to focus on standard, I thought, boy, that's really putting all your eggs in one basket. And I think the common, uh, commonly accepted thought process here is that if you focus on standard, standard sells packs. Therefore, only have standard. But I strongly believe that logic is flawed. I think featuring other formats like modern, but for one, but also formats like Pauper actually create a more diverse showing and have a wider audience. When you only feature standard, you're only going to be interesting to people that only play standard for the most part. Your most competitive players, your hardest core fans that already watch every bit of coverage and read every article the way it is. Imagine a world where pro level players got to feature formats that more of us played. Imagine watching some sort of competitive popper or a competitive gauntlet event where right now we already watch pros do a bit of draft and then they play standard. What if instead of the same two things for all 30 rounds, you played three rounds of draft, three rounds of standard, three rounds of modern, three rounds of popper, three rounds of whatever. If you featured at least, I believe, modern, popper, maybe even legacy or vintage, but I think at least modern and popper, okay? We can all agree that modern and popper, uh, outside of some cost barriers, are still very accessible to players, especially in the case of popper. Now, when deck prices spike, when standard it costs hundreds of dollars, it's seen as a barrier to new players. But by featuring things like popper, it gives you another chance to keep people interested. Not only will people who love watching Popper want to watch coverage who didn't want to watch coverage before, 
but also new players might see this as an additional way to come and play the game. If you're watching only people play $1,000 decks, that is a huge demotivating factor. If you got to see them play things like Popper, where decks might cost $40, $50, you're more likely to get more people interested in the game. Now, there is a complex thing here. Because, as we know, what is played in the Pro Tour often affects the secondary market. And so if everybody was watching pros play Popper, the $30 decks or $50 decks that we might enjoy might go up to 100 And while I acknowledge that as a likely scenario, it also still offers people a different way to a different entry into the game. And by only featuring standard, you only feature one way for people to get interested. I got into Magic the Gathering because of casual play. Now that is very difficult to feature in any real way, but I might be more interested in watching some competitive EDH matches. Maybe you had a, uh, a bounty competitive EDH tournament amongst the pros or something like that, just to give these other formats some camera time, I think would be very, very good. I think it's a huge mistake to assume that by not featuring or by only featuring uh, standard, you're protecting the players in any way. It's gonna make the format get staler faster, which I already see. FNM's attendance are down, the format's stale, people don't like standard because it rotates so fast, and then they don't have anything else to watch. So they watch nothing, right? If you don't like standard, you have no high-level ma magic coverage at all. Now, if there are the Star City games out there, but it's not really their responsibility, right? As soon as it becomes unprofitable for them, they're, they're really not incentivized to do coverage. And the GP scene and the Grand Prix scene is still bringing, or those are both the same thing, but they're bringing in a lot of players and it's not always standard. I think if we can diversify, I mean, pros are great at magic, right? So they can be great at multiple formats. Imagine having to compete in formats you weren't good at at the pro level and it would help bring everybody down right you might have somebody who's genius at popper somebody's really good at modern but they might stink at standard or draft but they're still good enough to get in there meanwhile you're watching compelling programming you're giving a little something to more people than just standard and you're still selling packs it's totally unfair to assume that if you feature modern it's not going to sell packs you know how i answer that question print more modern masters or popper if you feature cards in popper it gives you more viable reprints in new sets cards that aren't in the new set but are in popper decks or frontier decks or modern decks these are all viable reprints it will increase the value it will give you more options to give us players a higher ev on our packs because some of these more obscure uncommon commons or even older rares, while their prices may increase, it just gives you more options and viable reprints. I think it's way too narrow of a view to focus purely on standard, and that long term, this is going to hurt the game and not help it. And so I've prepared what is called a thunderclap message, and that is, you may have seen me tweet this out, but Essentially what it is, and it'll be linked in the description below, is a coordinated tweet and Facebook storm where you can support, and by supporting it costs no money, you just sign in with your Facebook, your Twitter, or your Tumblr, and that, and this time, I'm gonna actually change this based on when the campaign gets approved. We're all gonna say together that magic is not standard, it's unique. Featuring formats like Popper and Modern will help it grow. Hashtag magic is not standard. And then it gets a link and it's gonna to link to this video. And hopefully we can get Wizards of the Coast to pay attention to us players. I don't think we've seen any hard evidence that featuring a format like Popper or Frontier or EDH on the Pro Tour or other events is negatively affecting sales. I think that's an assumption Wizards makes. And sometimes you can look at data and have it tell you whatever you need to. 
But I can tell you this. I used to watch a lot of coverage. Now that basically it's all, it's all standard, I watch zero coverage. And I guarantee you there are hundreds of people just like that. And so I set the goal at 250 of you to support this. Nothing will happen. It costs you nothing. And if we don't reach that goal, this message won't get sent. So if you're interested, if you feel similar, sign up at this thunderclap and together, maybe we can make enough noise for Wizards of the Coast to reconsider what they're doing with coverage.